In this video, we're going to look at TDI tuning, particularly remapping them, how to choose an appropriate power level for your car, how to decide on an appropriate map, and we're going to answer the following important questions that you really need answers to before you make that buying decision. So what exactly are diesel remaps? Why do diesel cars respond so well to mapping? And what sort of power gains can you get? And are there any options if you can't get your diesel remap? So we've always said in all of our videos and on our website, one of the best modifications you can do to a modern turbo diesel engine is to remap it. So the computer within the car does an awful lot of work. It's controlling the fueling and generally the timing of everything within the engine, the way the turbo operates and boosts. And it very, very precisely controls when the fuel is injected and how much fuel is injected. All of these things are essential to the car's smooth, efficient running. Now, when a manufacturer makes a car, Car. They want the car to be reliable, but often the car will be sold in very hot climates and in cold climates and in places where the fuel quality is pretty poor and in places where the fuel quality is very, very good. So it would cost them a lot of money to set all of their cars up to work perfectly well in all of these different environments. And it's fair to say when a car rolls off the production line, they're not all the same. Some cars are much better built. The tolerances in the parts used are, are much tighter and you see power variations within cars rolling off the production line. So with a remap, what you're doing is basically tailoring your car to where you live, typical use that that car is going to be put to, and the precise condition of your car and its engine. So some have cynically said that manufacturers detune their turbos so they can still sell their petrols. And I can understand that. If you've got a diesel in the showroom and it's producing 200 brake horsepower and it's giving you 65 miles to the gallon, that is a pretty good deal, isn't it? Especially when you compare that to the petrol version that's got 200 brake horsepower and is only doing 38 miles to the gallon. So that's almost a no-brainer, isn't it? And they really want to sell their petrol cars. So there's an argument there that they've detuned their diesels to just give their petrols a place to sell. And it also means diesel engines are extremely reliable because they're so under stress. They've extremely over-engineered everything. Now, the way the diesel works is very different to a petrol engine. It uses compression to ignite the fuel. So as the cylinders squish the fuel and air charge together it gets hotter and hotter and hotter until it just explodes and that's how the engine burns the fuel and that's why it is so efficient because the entire air fuel charge is at combustible temperatures as it ignites which gives you a very very efficient engine if you haven't already done so please subscribe and drop us a like because it really helps us to get out there so remapping is generally done through the obd2 port so you would plug a computer in download the map parameters and it's a series of tables telling the car what to do in various conditions, looking at RPM and engine load. And the car will obviously make adjustments based on the temperature of the air that's coming in and the quality of fuel. So there's a certain amount of trim that goes on within the car itself as it's running. It's sniffing its exhaust fumes. It's just making sure that everything's running smoothly. And if it detects a problem, it will usually back off a little bit on the fuel or it might increase the air. There's various things that an engine can do. So if you've got access to the ECU and you can download the program and get it remapped. That is the best way of making extra power. And if you can do that on a rolling road, you can actually see what is happening within your engine while it is being used. And there is no better way of extracting power from your car than getting it set up on a rolling road and getting the map tailored to your car because you've probably done some modifications to that which weren't there when it came out of the factory. And those modifications will allow you to get more benefit from that remap when it's finally added to the car. So there are a few models out there that are maybe older or they've got a locked ECU. Now people are cracking these ECUs all the time. There was fairly recently they found a way to get into some of the BMW ECUs and that's opened up a whole realm of possibilities to people tuning them. So wait a little bit. If you've got a popular model chances are it can be remapped. But if it can't you've still got various other choices. So maybe it can be bench flashed so they will take the ECU out, open it up and direct connect to the chips on the ECU and flash it and change the coding that way. Other alternatives might actually be to replace the chip so we would call that chip tuning where you pull out the old chip and plug in a new chip with the new program. So generally those are off the shelf though so the remapping companies have looked at 
most of the different variations that you'd expect to see with those engines as they come out and they've got you a much more advanced mat to go into your car it's certainly better than the manufacturers but it's not quite up there with the bespoke remaps offered by remappers using a rolling road there is another option of getting a piggyback ECU or a tuning box. Now be very careful here. A lot of tuning boxes are rubbish. All they will do is dump more fuel into your diesel. Now dumping more fuel will make more power, but often it ends up being very, very sooty. If you've got a DPF filter and other particulate filters in the car, it can cause a lot of problems with those, clogging those up. So it might run fine for a few weeks. So you see these companies with really good reviews. People have just plugged it in, really like it, and then drop a a positive review and then a few months later they start experiencing these problems and you don't ever get to see that in the reviews so be very careful generally I found that if they've only got one connection that's generally just controlling the fuel and those are certainly the ones to avoid you really want one with multiple connections that's connected to multiple sensors in the car and it can offer a level of adjustment so I've actually tried out one from TDI tuning on my car and I found it to be very good I know another company have actually tested it against other tuning boxes and options in that sort of similar field and they found the TDI tuning one to be the best so it outperformed all of the others so everything varies on what car you've got what condition it's in so take that into account as well but it certainly makes sense if you've got a modern turbo diesel engine if the only mod you do is getting the mapping changed you will see benefits and in most cases on a diesel engine you'll see better fuel economy as well as more power so typically I've seen increases of 20 to 30 percent power Hour, which is significant and also 20% better fuel economy which is phenomenal so as a current petrol drive I'm a little bit jealous of these diesel owners that can get both more power and much better fuel economy and a lot of companies offer adjustable tuning boxes where there's a range of settings so you can go for hyper economical so it's optimized there for economy or you can go for maximum power and really ramp it up and get the maximum benefit from it so when you choose a remap you'll notice the remapping companies often and show you nice little power figures it's usually a headline power figure and just make sure that that is not a blip at the top end of the rpm range when a car is remapped you really want the power band to increase proportionally you don't want a little spike at one end and in some cases i've seen maps that are actually much lower elsewhere but they've got a massive spike and because that headline power figure looks more impressive they sell more units so you really cannot compare maps from different companies by the headline power figure you've really got to to look at the graph if you can't get a dyno printout that probably says something about the remapping company that are selling it because i would expect every company to at least have run something on a dyno to get a benchmark and see how well their map is doing this trial and error take it out on the road see if it feels better it's not a good approach for tuning and i've had someone do that to me so they offered me a, a custom map which basically was just them fiddling around in a spreadsheet with the maps and tables and it was fairly random I had to go back four times and it still wasn't what I wanted um, in that, that particular case I had a lot of power at the low end so a lot of wheel spin and that also damages the turbo because you want your turbo to cool down at those lower rpm figures so if you are a remapping company please bear that in mind turbos need that cool down period so make sure that any power spikes are actually in that usable part of the rpm range where people want it so I really hope this video has been useful to you if you haven't already done so please subscribe we want you to stay tuned and drop us a like because it really helps us to get out there thanks for watching and i'll see you in our next video